Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right-hand corner, we have Ball, starting as the white Pro Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Ninjob, starting as the pink Terran. This is on Eclipse. And this is going to be game two between Ninjob and Ball. I should have looked... Okay, in between... I have a little bit less time to cast today than usual. I'm going to have to drop out. So for people on Twitch, special shout-out to Future and Minions who are here. And Goromond, who's joining me for the first time, I think, as, as far as a live... Twitch cast and skin crawler who's in there. Long term supporter. Appreciate all you. Appreciate all you. Have lots of love. Um and that's gonna end up in this cast. I can only cast for about an hour. So I'm gonna rush through it. But in between this game and the next match, because for sure there's gonna be a game three here. The job took game one. We don't know what's gonna happen after that. We'll see. I don't know if he'll take this game or not. But in between those, I'm going to see who I'm forgetting as far as the person who the group has advanced. Because we know Agistol advanced. We know Mighty's advanced. And whoever wins this is going to face one or the other. And I'm trying to think who the third person that advanced is off the top of my head. And for some reason, I'm just blanking, which I feel bad. So I want to give them a huge shout out in game three between Ninjob and Ashball. Shout out to Ripest Tomato, who's given one more little shout out in chat. And that'll be it for the Twitch. If you want to watch live, watch live on Twitch, Tuesdays and Thursdays, by the way. Circa, currently it's 10 o'clock PST AM. Anyway, Barrick's going <laughs> to... I always feel weird doing that on YouTube. Whatever. Stop talking about it. That's the solution. Barrick's being plopped down is kind of an anti-zealot thing. And we do have the refinery being taken. Kind of sneaking around, making sure that there wasn't any sort of cheese. That probe making its way into the base. Gateway has been put down. From Ball, he's getting that assimilator alongside. Assume he's not going to apply Zealot Pressure because of the ramp. We'll see there. Getting a little bit body blocked by that SCV. He is going to be able to wander in and see that barracks being constructed. Sometimes, sometimes with a lot of very careful micromanagement, you can go and pick that off. Trying to get away from that SCV. He did take a little bit of damage. That was kind of like the flight. That almost seemed like something out of a movie where you see that guy just running across and slamming his body into the probe, but it just kind of bounces off and continues there. Cybernetic score about halfway finished, another you know, pylon being placed down, so it looks like a at least a somewhat standard build right off the bat. That's a supply depot in that corner that we can't see. First Marine being produced to take care of that probe. Now, here's the thing. Ninja Ob has showed that he can execute that level 2 weapons. I don't, I don't know what to call that build. So I'll just call it, like, I don't know, the 12-minute timing, the 12-13-minute timing, somewhere around that range. Of the level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. He has executed that really well in game 1. Honestly, every... So I guess I'll say this. For wanting to see more Terran make it up into Gosu and Hasu League. I have yet to see a Protoss fight that back. When it's... When there hasn't been shenanigans. Basically when it's gone into kind of a normal standard game. Factory being planted off just these two Marines, by the way. And I think Ninjob is, yeah, going to start building on this low ground with that bunker. Seal this up and just try to plant a command center down here. Two gateways, which is going to give Ball the opportunity with some Dragoons that are produced to perhaps apply a little bit of pressure on that front door. But getting back to that thought, I have not seen a Protoss stop that timing push yet. I have not seen a single Protoss that has been able to negate it, period. Interesting. Skipping, wow. This was a play by Ball. So first of all, I think he only has two probes in gas. We'll time this. Actually, no, I think he has the three. But he skipped Dragoon production to get an earlier Nexus. And as a result, he's going to have a much earlier Nexus than he would have otherwise. That is going to apply less pressure on the front. So Ninjob is going to put down this command center very comfortably. But with that in mind, once he has these Dragoons out, and once he's able to actually, let's see, this... SCV doing weird things where it didn't actually get that scout on the base. Coming back across it, he's going to see that Nexus warping in. It's not going to get an eyeful of much else. I think this probe is waiting to put down some next tier tech. Potentially? No, never mind. Ball's going to go ahead and produce additional round of Dragoons rather than pushing any sort of tech. Second Dragoon is waiting on the front door just in case there was any sort of aggression moving in. Probe is going to wander out. I think it can run by and get a look at the command center and sacrifice its life to see that being built. And they'll see if it opts to do so. Actually, no, now it can't. Tank is there. First siege tank produced, second siege tank on the way. No range being upgraded just yet. Armory immediately and academy immediately. And I like this play, so the SCV was taken out. 
But I actually love this play from Ninja, and that shows a lot of really good adjustment. He's actually, I believe, delaying Siege Tech upgrade because he realizes he can get away with it because fewer Dragoons were produced earlier and that Nexus was produced earlier. And as a result, that's going to allow him to get that factory a little bit faster. It looks like the academy a little bit faster, the armory a little bit faster. It just speeds up the build quite a bit. And he knows that he's comfortable here because that's two siege tanks and two marines with nearby repair to deal with what would potentially be three dragoons pushing his front door. Of course, Ball taking more of a defensive position so he doesn't even need to worry about it. Next question for Ball is, after this round of dragoons, is he going to hold back and go for a quick third, and I think that is what he's opting to do. Already has that probe in position to plant it down. So taking that, and here's the other critical thing, is when you take this one o'clock base, when you take this quick third, there is a gas there, which opens up some options for tech. But now, Ninja Oab moving out with three Marines and three tanks, and this is two Dragoons engaging this. They're gonna need to get back to home base. They're, this is, with a concentrated army, enough with some micromanagement and reinforcements to take this out. But it does look very threatening for Dragoons now going for the second high ground. Engaging. Perfect engagement point. Picking off one tank, taking out a couple Marines, only one Dragoon getting taken out. There's a lot of misfiring that happened there, and I do not believe Ninja was able to get a lot of damage done because of that high ground mischance firing. And loses two tanks which is huge. Mines being upgraded. Only a single tank back here. Nothing in that bunker. And honestly, this natural expansion is at high risk of being breached. Two vultures, though. This was really heads up on Ninja. Two sneaking out. I think now he realizes there is no Marines in that bunker. One Marine making his way down. Does it get picked off? Does not get picked off. But the Dragoon's still able to wander in. They should be able to get behind this SCV line. Third Dragoon moving up. If it backs off just a, a touch, it should be okay. Two tanks and SCVs now working. And the SCVs getting the kill there. Working on this line. But this is a huge amount of disruption on Ninja Ob's natural expansion. We'll be able to take these Dragoons out. But not before losing a lot of mining time. And significant amounts of units and SCVs. Mines being planted on that front door. The Observer. So that it looks like the Vultures... I don't know if they got any kills. I don't think they got any kills. They got four kills, five kills. So I missed that in the meantime. They wandered into the natural expansion and were able to do a tit-for-tat maneuver. And it looks like wipe out a lot of probes at that natural expansion. Maybe even took out some reinforcing dragoons. This is a neat little pylon wall. I like that. So the vultures can't sneak around the bottom here. So Ball, able to dive and disrupt some economy here. However, his own economy disrupted a bit, and he's down to just two Dragoons on his front door. Sorry, four Dragoons on his front door. Which is going to... Let's see if speed... Yeah, Vulture Speed being upgraded. I think Ninjo realizing... Ooh, these probes. One probe down. He's going to end up losing a second. Does lose a second. And a third. Wow, half the probes transferring here. Taken out. And Ninjo overall... Superior SCV count... Superior supply, although he has supply capped himself right this second. And keep in mind, Ball also planted a lot of pylons here. A lot of pylons that he's not going to need to build in the near future to provide some static defense for these expansions. But Ninjo, I feel like, has done... I lo he's looking slick, honestly. I like the decision-making he has made overall to put himself in a good position in the mid-game. And he's going to go ahead and check for proxy stuff. Maybe even plant a mine just in case there was a sneaking expansion being taken. And I think that is wise also considering the shape of game one. Where we saw Ball opting to go for more of a guerrilla style tactic. And try to do kind of that distanced action. Ninjo is setting up for his third. Getting five factories overall. He has two machine chops down for tank production. Vulture and Dragoon engaging there briefly at the 12 o'clock. But yeah, planting these mines, so that's a bit cut off. Trying to delay those additional expansions. Siege tech finally there. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor on the way. But I think Ninjo is going to go for more of a defensive sort of game overall. Might even go for some Vulture drops. We'll see. He does have this control tower down on this Terran starport. I do not see a dropship in the air on the minimap, though. Dragoon and Vulture just hanging out. Momentarily. Now, now starting to fight. 
an in job. This is a very skeleton crew. Putting an engineering bay kind of out in space, finally, to provide a little bit of kind of a, well, one, a wall, but two, some spotting. Floating that command center out, this is a very risky take because with all the dragoons that are kind of out here, this is just ball not having vision. Comparatively, you just, wrong person. Now nobody's seeing. You can see on his map, he really only sees his side of the map here with his observer coverage and with his dragoon positioning. Very much in the dark. And as a result, that's going to allow Ninjo to go ahead and take this 9 o'clock base. And that's going to put it, put the situation to be three bases to three. This Dragoon is wandering down. Will it be able to go into that 9 o'clock and spot anything is the question. There are vultures there to engage. And I'm wondering if this is going to be, with Ball seeing this, if this is going to be enough for him to realize, okay, yes, there are in fact, this is in fact territory that's already been taken. Might move out an observer to that location down the line. We'll try to keep an eye for that. More pylons warping in. Ninjo supply blocked again, and we are seeing a tech switch from Ball. The timing, so I think he did have a sniff of this. Also getting the level one weapons. Realizing that Ninjo was going for more of a defensive long-term play and he's going to be spread out and being a little bit more passive. He's taking that opportunity to go ahead and go straight to air. Does Ninjo know this is happening though? Because this is a lot of carriers. Here's a critical thing. Go check out Nyokan's channel. He has a channel that talks about the importance of weapons upgrades for Goliaths in these sort of scenarios. And critically, Ninjo is already going to be sitting at weapons 2 on his mech once he's engaging these carriers. But, and it looks like, okay, he did spot it just now. Because just after that comp set, we see some Goliaths being built. So Ball in a situation where... Will he be able to get the critical mass and find the engagement points to deal with these Goliaths? Charm boosters also being upgraded. To really get these carriers... I don't know. I feel like carriers are one of those units that need to be babied. You need to find the, the cliffside edge to make it work. You need to make sure they're not get stranded in open space. You have to micro them. They're a huge investment, but they are an investment that can pay off. And honestly, though, with 150, almost 150 supply of siege tanks and vultures and glass, that's still a really scary mech army that's going to be underneath this. Ball looking to try to take this base, planting pylons in the face of a couple pylons, which is, or a pylon and a couple mines, which is going to immediately provoke that response. Ball moving out a little bit with these dragoons, kind of splitting them out in the forest. He, I feel like he might want that shuttle alongside. Four carriers out in the field. Sorry, three carriers. A fourth will be there shortly. I feel like the magic number is usually six. When they start being useful. What I really like to see, and this is kind of like a higher level future SC technique, is a shield battery somewhere out in this field. Maybe even here. Because if you can... It's kind of a sneaky Protoss, one of those dirty Protoss tricks. When you get a shield battery out in the field, oftentimes what you can do is you can engage with your interceptors, take a little bit of base damage, retreat to that shield battery, recharge, and then re-engage on that army. And because they can fly, it's it's useful. I am worried for Ball. He is around 190 supply, but a lot of that supply is these carriers that are not on the front right now. These Dragoons, I think, are a loss. Backing up right now. Some Dragoons clearing some mines out to that corner, but this is a big mech army bearing down. That is a lot of Goliaths to deal with that carrier army. Do we have Psy Storm anywhere as well? I don't think we even have a Templar Archives down. We do have a Citadel of a Dune. Third gateway right there. Whether Ball wants to or not, he needs to get the carriers out in the field. He is sitting near 200 supply, so in theory he has the army to get it done. Vultures pushing forward. So the Vultures want to engage on the Goliaths. The carriers want to engage on the sea chanks and everything else. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the interceptors are even out for this engagement. And there's no dragoons left underneath this. This ooh, this is looking like it might be GG near imme nigh immediately. One carrier down. Additional filing. You can just see the Goliath spray all the interceptors dying before they can even 
get spotted. And this is the power of that level 2 weapons upgrade. Another carrier getting down. So all of that time, money, on Ball's part just melting very rapidly in that fight. Diving into that natural expansion, Goliath, completely unopposed currently. Now can Ball relocate? Because he's going to need to with these siege tanks pushing in. Looking to see if there's additional... There are There is additional carriers. Doesn't look like he's planning anything. He's, he wants to stand and hold here. Pylon's being taken out. The Citadel will be lost. Just in case there was an Arbiter, there is in fact a Science Vessel in position or any Dark Templar to deal with this. Shuttle finally engaging. I think it emptied its cargo and was very quickly taken out. And just in case, Ninjo is going to go ahead and move out and establish an additional base. Here's the thing. Ball... Has a sizable economy, still, with his three bases running. Although the ones, the, the the main is looking somewhat thin. He just doesn't have the army to deal with this. And once again, we see Ninjo, yeah, just level two weapons, level one army, pushing out and devastating everything in his path. Level two air weapons is starting to be upgraded. But still, not a lot of interceptors on the ground trying to deal with these siege tanks. The Goliaths repositioning here. And Ninjo actually, wow. You can see on the mini-map, doesn't even care. He's like, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this upper left-hand corner while this fight's happening. I'm not even worried. Ball in red supply right now because of all of the pylons he's lost. And things are looking ugly for him in this match. Yeah, and building a command center kind of out of position. Odd way to do it. I'm wondering if he's just distracted and is like, just, just build it. So honestly, I'm going to say this game is definitely going to Ninjo the way things are rolling up. It would take an absolute miracle to make things go otherwise. Siege Shank sieging up here at the 12 o'clock base. I'm expecting GG any second. And this was, yeah. So Terrans take note. It is a strong race. Don't need to be afraid of it. Go ahead and <laughs> I say this trying to play uh, Zerg myself when I have been playing. Nevertheless, I feel so bad for these carriers. It's like you spend all this time waiting in your, your starport, waiting to get out there in the field. You're told by the entire Protoss army, you're the critical piece, you're the critical piece. And then you go out, you send out your interceptors, and they just explode in the air before they're even able to do damage. Those Goliaths, I tell you. Char they call it Charon boosters for a reason, you know? It's like hellish un <laughs> underneath. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. We will move on to game three between Ninjo and... Ninja Ob and Ball. And I will have that third person who is going into the round of four who will meet one of these players. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.